We're gonna go ahead and do start on our truck and we're gonna do the, it's important to get these watertight obviously. So uh, these are not expensive at all and it's really actually pretty easy to do. You can do one in an hour, take all the old stuff out, put the new stuff in. The seals are very important. We'll be sealing um, the doors, roof rail, roof rail seals they're called for the uh, windows to go into and then the trunk as well. This is really surprising. This is the least rusty. It has service rust. Don't get me wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll address all of that. But this is the least rusty trunk in a Grand Prix I've ever seen from one that sat. And even sat in a garage because they collect moisture for some reason in here. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Usually this is rusted out real bad right here where this brace connects. Usually these are completely gone and the cup underneath that I showed you guys from underneath is gone. Um, there's that hole that we saw. We've got one hole to address and then this is good too. So we'll address this. We'll put rust inhibitor. I like pour 15. That's what I used inside uh, the, the cabin of the car. Uh, and then we'll seal it up. So we'll get to work on this. Wow. I did want to show you this about the seals. If they're original, they'll have a string. And you could just pull this out, broke it, but we can get it again, use a screwdriver, and just kind of push up from underneath, and it gets everything under the lip out. Otherwise, you're gonna be picking this thing out. The uh, door, for the doors, the roof rail seal kit, if these are original, there'll be a wire and it doesn't break, it just pulls right out. So, let's keep going. Well, we got it all out. I never said it was the cleanest job, and <laughs> you'll definitely draw blood if you are trying to do it fast but this stuff on the corners is where at the factory they put a little adhesive and I know that they're not really true 90 degree corners or anything but that's where you have to scrape out most of the stuff that's where most of your work's going to be is right there we're going to get this cleaned up but I just want to say one thing don't be discouraged whenever you start on something like this. It's hard. It's, it's going to be tough. Um, don't give up. Just keep on scraping. Just keep on scraping until you get it all out. The whole point of this channel is to kind of show people how easy it is to, to own and enjoy an old classic car. You don't have to have a 100% original, 100% restored, $100,000 car to enjoy this hobby. And you could do most of the stuff yourself. Just keep at it. Don't quit. Okay. So I found a couple of spots that started to surface rust focus there and I'll be putting some touch of paint on that but I sprayed it with this stuff it's going to turn it purple wherever those spots are you can see it a little bit there and I think it's important to go ahead and do that because this outside part will be exposed obviously to elements um, not while I have it because I don't drive them in the rain even pretty anal about that stuff anyway but the next guy might want to drive it daily and it, it could be driven daily I hope once we're done so I want to go ahead and touch that up put some uh, rust inhibitor on it and touch it paint all right we're gonna let that dry 
a little dirty over here, but it's a lot better. Anything that's gonna be exposed to the elements need to have some kind of paint on it. All right. So we've put some pour 15 in here and we've used a wire brush to scrape off all the surface rust. I did find a few pits and a couple little holes that we'll have to address, but that's easy stuff. And I'll show you guys how to do it. At least we're not doing a whole uh, trunk pan. That's hard. Okay, we're gonna start the trunk seal. This is what it looks like. See the flares on the side? And then of course it is, you want the um, top to point outward, okay? So we're gonna start, this is the end we're gonna start right here on this edge. And it starts right here, okay? Now, I like to use this stuff this is really good stuff. And I'm not gonna put it all over the whole thing. I'm only gonna put it on the corners and where I start and stop, okay? I better stop saying K, okay? okay? <laughs> but that's the stuff. Let's get to it. The tools I'll be using are the back of this dental pick. Only the back though. This will puncture. So just use the back. And then also a plastic trim tool. You guys can see it against the white there. And this is just to pop it in. It just pops right in, okay? Pop, 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 I'll show you. So on the flare, you just pop it right in. Pop, 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 do the top. Into that lip. That's it. I'll bring you in and show you. Oops. Okay, the outer part of the lip is out. Okay, the in, inside part, you just pop it right in. You see, I've already got weather stripping adhesive there. And in this corner, you don't want to do all of them just right yet, because it does dry fairly fast. So let's go ahead and get at it. Okay, we're into our first turn. Let's see how it looks when it's done. Looks really good. See how that pops into that lip? All the way around. This is good to do while I'm waiting on the trunk pan to dry. So you set this part in first, and then you use the tool to pop that under the lip. Very simple. Don't be scared of this job, guys. Don't let, don't let some body man charge you hundreds of dollars to do this. This is something you could do for yourself. Before you glue the end, or put any adhesive in the end here, before you do any of that, um, I, I've cut this with several different things, you, you know, razor blades, knives, whatever. Scissors do the best job. You don't want a big gap there. So I just use scissors. I go ahead and mark it, give myself a little bit by pushing this back. And I forgot to mention whenever you're in the corners here, you want to push it back when you, you know when you're wedging in. You don't want to wedge straight down. You're wedging towards the curve, towards it, towards it, towards it, not straight down, towards it this way. 
So it looks really, really good. That seal is gonna work. So, next we're gonna cut this. And then the best way to set this, I think, is just to close the hood, close the trunk lid, deck lid. <laughs> I keep getting a hit on these videos for not using the right terminology and I just make up words sometimes, so I apologize. Um, but yeah, the deck lid, we're, we're gonna close it, use the weight of it and the security of the latch to push this down while the adhesive dries in the corners. I've already cut a little bit, but I'm gonna cut just a tiny bit more, maybe a half of an inch here. Throw that over there, get some adhesive. Right up to the edge. looks good. Pretty tight fit. That's how you want it right there. I might trim that tiny bit off. But now we need the adhesive to set. So make sure my keys are not back here because there's no internal trunk release on these. Go ahead and slam it. we got some rain coming in gonna have to close my garage door in a minute all right now we can start on these roof rail seals these are the original ones I'm almost positive because there is this plastic keeper here and usually people don't put those back on when they put new ones in that tells us that there is a wire inside this and that makes the job so much easier to pull this out it is very messy get your shop back ready but this makes it so much easier this stuff is crispy crunchy nasty oh gross i'm gonna video this for you so you can see what i'm doing i love these dental tools man you can get them on amazon for hardly anything and you take the chunk you take a chunk out Right, and then you just kind of work this thing up in there and you will find there it is see the wire see how easy that is so many people hire this stuff out and that's kind of the whole point of making this channel is I have I'm not I'm not saying I do it all right either I'm just a guy who loves to cruise these cars and so I do what I have to to get them cruisable and so anyway I, I, I kind of just want to show you guys how easy it is you don't have to own a million dollar car you can just find something in a barn get it working and pay as you go just enjoy the hobby I'm so impressed with this car even these back windows I put some white lithium grease on them a couple days ago and they started working this car is pretty amazing let's go all right so we've got all that cleaned out you guys can see me that is a chrome piece that it sits in and we're going to save that and we're going to save these wires too we're going to stuff those up underneath before we put our uh, new seals on so i'll show you guys how to do that now. 
I'm going to use these pre-molded Super Soft by Metro made in the USA. Uh, be careful, they only go one way. You don't want to glue them in and have the passenger side one on the driver's side one. That'd be terrible. But, and it doesn't say this in the instructions, but there's a pink dot for the driver's side and there's like a turquoise blue looking dot for the passenger side. I didn't see it anywhere on the instructions. They might be on the instructions. Um, this year I've done three sets of these. So uh, I may have just missed it because I'm not really good for reading directions. But these will go in. They're, they're molded very specifically for this car. And there is one place to put a screw. When you get to the end, it, you just kind of shove the end down, down inside the door. But you want to make sure that there's not a whole lot curled up because these are electric windows. First, I'm going to put these wires up into the railing. Wow, there's spiders everywhere. Great. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to put the weather, weather stripping in the areas that um, tend to get the most use. So right here on this, the top of the triangle here. And then, of course, at the bottom, in the middle, where the clip is, and then on the back. You don't have to go the whole way, though. But it's just like your uh, the trunk seal as far as putting it in. So I started here in the corner, stuffing it up in there. And all the way down. And there are two little pieces like this. They're a little plastic. They're not screws, they're just push. Push in and hold. Somebody will know the real name for these. I don't. <laughs> But they go in, there's a couple little holes that you have to dig these, the old ones out, and then put the new ones in. And there are holes for them in the new molding. But I, I just put adhesive down here and here for right now. And then I'll just kind of do it maybe three or four more places on the top. But you shove in, just like the trunk, you shove in the far side first into the lip on the far side and then you use the tool to push this up into the lip on the front side. Can you guys see how there's two lips here? Inside lip, outside lip. Okay. much better. I think that's going to keep the water out. It rains. I've got a little wobble right there, but I think it's in, yeah, it's in the trim. Right here is a problem area. It's really hard to get that to stay up in there. But just like the uh, trunk, the best way to hold this uh, in place while it's drying is the windows what actually goes against it so I'm going to get that rolled up and then I'm going to do the other side here's the before on the passenger side pretty ratty oh boy Okay, finished product. Looks really good. Slides right up and seals.
we are almost ready to put this car back on the road in the shed since 1992 I still don't know why it was parked because this car <laughs> amazes me every single time I turn around um, the cold starts on it are amazing uh, I did a kind of a top end rebuild on the carburetor just accelerator pump and some gaskets and stuff and it, it works great I took the gas tank out and I replaced all of the uh, anything that was rubber uh, the metal lines are all great uh, but I did replace all the rubber lines and uh, clean the tank and put it back in and there's nothing in the filter so it's completely clean I didn't have to use the new fuel tank that I bought which is good because it didn't actually fit I think it was for an Impala or something a lot of times on these Pontiacs, even in the system at the parts store, it'll say, same as Pontiac, same as, you know, for an Impala part or something. And a lot of times they don't. A lot of times they don't work. Sometimes they do, but a lot of times they don't. Like the brake parts in the back, they're all Impala, but the front is specific to Pontiac. I've, I've replaced all the rubber par parts of the engine and there was no thermostat in it, so that kind of tells us maybe there was some overheating problems at some point, but we're going to find out. I took it out and just drove it around the property yesterday and found out it has a positive track rear end, safety track in Pontiac speed. So that's kind of neat. This was a very heavily optioned car. Um, I did find out that the original owner was a uh, real estate agent and it was registered in her name for uh, 37 years so I could kind of think okay tilt wheel air conditioning uh, the base motor but literally every other option power windows uh, safety track for some reason maybe it was just at the factory they had an extra one and they threw it under there <laughs> you never know but this this car amazes me and I can't wait to get it on the road. We're almost done today. I'm gonna to do carpet. Um, I'm gonna clean the head, finish cleaning the headliner, and then I'm gonna do carpet, reinstall the uh, center console, reinstall all the seats. I've already done the package tray. Uh, if anybody knows where I can find the Grand Prix letters for the front fenders, that's the only thing I'm missing. And I went on eBay and gosh they're expensive so if anybody's got some of those put it down in the description I'll I'll pay for shipping I'll, I'll pay you for the parts obviously I just don't want to pay $250 for some pitted uh, lettering so let's get started on this thing let's get it done so let's talk about the setup um, I've got a silver marker to mark my holes I've got a couple of punches basically is what I'm going to use them for a chisel and a big uh, standard screwdriver and what I do is once I establish where the holes are going to be for uh, different stuff like the, the seats we'll have a couple holes in this and then seat belts uh, depending on the size of the hole that I need I'll heat it up with this little torch and um, Kind of gouge out the hole so make it a little bit bigger than the actual screw hole and that really helps me out as far as um, placement
Well, the back half is done. And I gotta say, it's a pretty nice place to sit. Long road trip, I'm not sure somebody my height could get in with the front seats in, but gosh, for a kid or something, it's pretty nice. It's very comfortable. Now for the front. I found this dime from 1968 underneath the carpet, the original carpet. So I kept it and I'm going to put it underneath the uh, carpet here. So this is the center console. It was in the trunk for, well, I'm assuming since 1992. And it's in pretty sad shape. It had, before I started videoing, I didn't think about it, but I wanted to show it. It had, uh, it has real wood grain on it, real wood. Not, not fake, it's real. Um, but because it had been in a trunk and it had been moist in the trunk, it really just kind of ruined it. So I'm going to do a before and after of this. Some of you guys that are real Pontiac fans put in the description what used to go here. My yellow 421 Grand Prix, same year, does not have these holes. It just says 421 there. And something sits right here. This is a wire that comes up, and there's a little something that sits right here. So let me know in the comments. Okay, about as done as we can get. It's got a few pits in it. Not bad. Right here. Here's all the stuff I used. And I think it's going to look really nice in the car. Very shiny. All right. Let's get back to the carpet. Okay, got the seats in, got the console in. I'm going to have to look at my 2 plus 2. It has white bucket seats as well. But I don't have any armrests. They weren't in the trunk. I've looked everywhere. But this is looking really nice. I've got a little bit of work to do on the headliner to get it up there. I'm going to wrap the steering wheel. going to cover the dash. going to clean with a toothbrush all the dash components now that I can sit in a chair and not on a bucket. But it's coming around. It looks great. Gosh, you got to love a pillarless hardtop. Man.